welcome to the very latest MTD podcast. My name is Joe Reynolds and I have over 25 years experience in the design, manufacture, application, sales and marketing of cutting tools and associated products. Today I'm joined by James Rhys Davis. He is a strategic relation manager at Sambit Coleman. He's an engineer, passionate about industry and has enjoyed a broad career from tool maker to design and then into sales. James has been focusing around new investments within digital manufacturing, and it has been a particular focus for Industry 4.0, as it has become more tangible within manufacturing. James, welcome to the podcast. How are things? Hello, Joe. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. It's certainly a different 2020 than we all imagined, but it's busy. I'm glad to see things are picking up again from the investment side of the business, and I think a really great topic that we're going to discuss today is how Industry 4 has been evolving. And I think the COVID-19 situation will certainly drive a lot more of the Industry 4 within the manufacturing industry. So I think it's a real poignant time to take this podcast today. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. And James, you know, people call it Industry 4, 4 IR, you know, the fourth industrial revolutions, many different names for it, depending where you come from. But if we can just start with the basics, what is uh, Industry 4 um, from a basic level, maybe to something a bit more advanced? Yep, I think it's good to start with the basics. Joe, you're right. I mean, Industry 4.0, the term has been around for, I think we really saw it boom out in 2015. Um, it was developed out of Germany, the um, terminology of it but essentially it's the fourth industrial revolution as we see it and it's really about utilizing connected devices taking data learnings and whether we the machines themselves utilize those learnings to adapt and adjust or if it's us as human beings actually gathering that data interrogating it and then turning in something valuable and useful across the full manufacturing value chain so right from design through to verification with machining in there and processing and operations planning and gathering your logistical items so it's it's really putting that digital thread through the value chain of manufacturing yeah so obviously you represent sambit coleman the world's largest uh, cutting tool manufacturer And it's fair to say that's what you're known for. That's what you do best, potentially. You know, you design and manufacture and sale cutting tools. How on earth did you get involved in uh, for IR? You are right. And thank you for that, Joe. We are the global leader within cutting tools and that's our brand is renowned for it. But we've always been an innovative company. We've always tried to push the boundaries and stretch the ideas of that will bring customers benefits, really, within the manufacturing industry. and we see a straightforward tangible link here with sensor embedded and digitalized cutting tools basically enabling people to get the most out of their assets and it starts if we start right from the beginning you want to be able to choose the cutting tools and run the cutting data at the right requirements to give you the best out of them so if we start from that end having the tools available to be able to select them and then as you move through actually being able to get feedback from the tools through sensor embedded equipment, but also being able to monitor your assets, machine tool assets, and get the most out of them. So it's really been a connection and a journey, you could say, from our cutting tool heritage to basically taking it to the next level and enabling it to integrate within the whole ecosystem of the shop floor and beyond. Yeah, so I was looking I was looking through the internet, doing a bit of research before today, and uh, four or five things have jumped out at me really there's uh sustainability uh in- information and communication technology intelligent manufacturing which you've just touched on materials components and machining methods and of course the big one the uh the skill gap how do you think those things fit within within um you know industry four if we take it from the skills gap perspective to start with joe it's we know when we see a growing trend, unfortunately, within the manufacturing industry of obtaining the skills needed to really add value and develop and push the industry forward, we see a, a diminishing pool here. So by codifying the knowledge, 
i.e. taking what we know today in the little black books and the learnings and actually putting them into a space that we can access them readily, whether that's cutting data, tool application, or actually driving those tools in a productive manner, an efficient and effective manner. That's really the start of it, being able to have that somewhere that addresses the skills gap in a small area, enables that knowledge to be accessed by people readily, no matter what time of day or night it is or where in the world you are. But then as we develop it more and put it into more CAN cycles within CAD CAM systems or even code generators and driving tools in effective and efficient manner, that's really where it starts. And so sort of addressing the skills gap there, pulling that and giving tools available to support this, which furthermore enables the sustainability aspect that you touched on here. So not only sustaining the industry, which that helps because we're bringing the knowledge in, but also sustainability enabled through more efficient uses of cutting data, cutting tools, machine tools, because if we're using them more efficiently and getting better output out of them, we're burning less electricity, less oil. So we start becoming a more greener planet as well. So the whole thing has a good thread throughout it to help with sustainability, the skills gap. As you said, we've touched on intelligent tools. There was a couple of others you brought up, Joe, as well there. Yeah, just basically machine and methods, uh, materials and things like that. Yeah, and in terms of machining methods, as I touched on, we see it more and more with the knowledge, if we call it, of driving cutting tools being embedded into CAM systems. But also we've developed some specific code generators to drive. You know, we've brought some innovative tools onto the market, Coroturn Prime, Invo Milling, Spiro Grooving. So it's tools and methods and actually packaging the whole thing in an easily accessible way to drive the tool in the best possible way to cut the various materials. Yeah, for sure. And if we look at data, data is all around us. Now, everyday life, you know, it is literally, if, if you've got a smartphone, you know, data is used to remarket to you, ultimately to help you. And as manufacturing embraces more data, I think the longer it goes and the more data that's harvested, the better it's going to be. It has to be. I mean, you can then pick the trends out. We can see what's good, what's bad, what's indifferent and actually make calculated data-driven decisions out of this. So we are doing it with our silent tools program, the intelligent boring tools where we started with sensor embedded tools, because these are typically being run on high value components, difficult to machine materials in bores where we can't see what's actually going on. So by having sensor embedded tools here and the data and the algorithms being built up, we can effectively predict when the tools are going to wear out, need insert changes. And in the worst case, if there was an insert failure, the tool can actually retract prior to it failing and damaging the components. So the data that we harvest here is critical because it enables us to build the future of the digital manufacturing industry. Yeah, for sure. And if you've got if you've got a, a machine shop and you're doing ink and every day, that's one thing. But if you've got data from 4,000 companies machining in Canal, that presumably that data can be almost shared around, obviously via you guys at Coromant, that, that data can be shared around the world, can't it? You can look to improve strategies and ultimately if you've got the data of all these hundreds or thousands of companies machining in a particular material group, you're going to have more data to then pass down your, your, your client chain. Exactly. And then this goes back to feeding into our apps and also enabling you to select the right cutting data. As materials evolve, we collect that data, feed it into our apps. I mean, today we've got 20,000 materials available in our database, which anybody can access. And as people develop new materials and cutting parameters get defined and refined, we put those in, we update them continuously, and then they're available for anybody to access and take advantage of. And it then it links back into the skills gap and the sustainability and continuously evolving this to make components in a better, more effective and more efficient manner, which enables people to operate them with machine shops more effectively and efficiently. And it continues. We continue as a society and as a, the human race to evolve and do things better than before. Yeah, no, no, I, I concur with that. But it, it's 
everything we're talking about, you know, industry for smart factories, it sounds very, very aspirational, doesn't it? It sounds like something that the largest companies in the world, in the world would look to uh, embrace. But that, that's not the whole story, James. No, it's not. And I think this is something that, and it's really good you bring this up, Joe, because I think it's, I'd say it's become in the last five, six years that Industry 4 has been talked about. It's been very aspirational. Everybody's talked about it. It was a good buzzword that was flying around. But I think it's become more recognized and more appreciated that this is for everybody. This is available. People are taking steps within the SMEs for sure. We see more and more robots automation coming in. And I'd say that the sensor embedded tools and access to the data is just a natural step to this. I mean, if I talk around the apps, they're available and free, but then moving forwards into things like machining insights, which is machine tool monitoring, enabling you to monitor your assets and get the most out of them, pinpoint the areas that you want to focus on, because we all know there's somewhere everything there's something can be improved in it, but actually having tools and data to pinpoint the biggest areas to improve. And I mean, we're talking about you know one hour back, saving an hour will justify the cost for it. Saving an hour a month, it will pay itself back. So, I mean, we're not looking at huge outlays here by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and I think even the most efficient company in the world is going to save an hour a week if if, uh, if if they monitor, if they look at what they're doing and look to improve. So yeah, no, I'd agree. Well, it, whilst we're talking about savings, I don't know, it's you know, it, it's not this black and white. But what what savings can be achieved? Do you, do you believe when we're talking about the CNC machining environment? If we if we take the global average, Joe, for machine tool utilization, it's it's a rather scary figure. I mean, we talk about machine tool utilization typically on a global average here being only 35%, 35% of the time it's actually being used. So, you know, if we can increase that even by 5%, it's a massive increase here. And you'll do that by pinpointing where it stopped, whether it's for work changeovers and really increasing it. We've seen savings um, with process control, which is another machine tool monitoring of on average of 20,000 euros a year savings just on one component going through it on a 12,000 outlay. So there's significant savings here and it really comes down to utilizing that machine tool more effectively and efficiently. You want to keep your assets making you money as often as you can. Yeah, and it starts right at the beginning, doesn't it? You know, picking picking the, your drawing, um, whether that be digital or physical drawing, and and ultimately bending your, your tools, getting the tools ready for uh, for the next job. Exactly. I mean, if we look down that whole value chain, you don't want to have you don't want to have loads of tools sat there waiting for the job. You want the tools there right at the right time delivered to you and then you want to utilize them in the best and most effective manner and you want to be able to get the data to see to first of all apply them at the right data and then secondly to optimize them run them and make sure your assets are turning and making you money yeah again i would agree you know i've been around cutting tools for 25 years and i truly believe industry 4 will be a game changer for sure for uh, for cutting tools and the machining process as a whole when, when i was just i say having a having a think prior to this i'm thinking preventative maintenance you're going to know when that insert fails before before the operator you know knows so obviously you can stop that uh, increased productivity if the tool isn't being pushed again the machine's going to know that and, and can change parameters either tell the operator to do it or even still better still it can do it on the fly it can do it itself obviously this is going to improve improve uh, quality it's going to re- improve surface finishes it's going to reduce the number of scrap components um you know it, it goes on and it goes on it's going to be more operator friendly you know you're going to you, you, your button push is now going to be upskilled aren't they because they're not going to have to stand there you know hovering over the e-stop they could actually go off and do some more you know some more um you know some better tasks essentially and you can upskill these guys and i do genuinely feel that it, it's gonna it's gonna change the way we do machine going forward it's completely that joe i mean it really is about taking the non-value added aspects out of it and using digitalization to 
really focus on the value adding part and optimizing the processes. It's about increasing productivity, which has been at the core of our go to market, Sambit Coromant. So, as the industry is evolving, which is sort of coming full circle back to where we started this dialogue, we see the industry evolving and we support the drive to do it through digitalization of the processes. I mean, we talk about data being the new oil or the new gold, depending on who you speak to. And this is just really part of it. And as you rightly say, the list is endless. It's about getting the machines running more effectively, more efficiently, deploying the cutting tools in the right manner. But then equally having the data to actually look back and see where you've changed something, what impact has that had? Before, you know, we'd take, we'd change something, we'd have the gut feel or we'd follow it through. But times are busy. It's always busy. We haven't got time. We change something. It's fixed. So then we move on to something else. And um, maybe we don't follow it all the way through. But with the digital thread, you can. Yeah, for sure. If we look at adoption, you know, you mentioned automation. That actually falls under the, the third industrial revolution banner. But here in the UK, we've been quite late, haven't we, on you know looking at automation. I'm, I'm pleased to say that is changing. Everywhere you go now, you seem to be having pick and place robots and more advanced bar feeders and things. But when we talk about digital manufacturing and industry 4.0, how does the um, UK compare to the rest of Europe, maybe even globally as well? I'd second that, exactly what you said. I think we've been a bit late coming to the party. but I think we are in a really positive step here now moving forwards um, with the equipment and the tooling coupled together with more holistic view, you know, machine monitoring systems. It's really here and available. And I think people are now really waking up to the fact that this is, it's not something that's for the big giants, the big blue chips and OEMs. I mean, this is accessible and available to everybody. So it's really about I think it's, you know, think big, start small and scale quickly. And I think that should be our mentality as a UK manufacturing base. I like that. Say that one more time. I'll write that down. (laughs) Think big, start small, scale quickly. Yeah, there we are. I like it. So for people listening to this, whether you're an employee of a business or you run a small job shop with two or three machines or indeed an applications engineer, at a, at a large blue chip, you know, how, how do they find out more about the Sambit Coromant apps and the, your Industry 4.0 offering? So, Joe, it's it's quite easy. You can either go to the web, so go to sambit.coromant.com, or reach out to your local Sambit Coromant sales engineer. Be on, only more than happy to contact you or give us a call um, on the website if you look through into the Coro Plus area that's where we've wrapped everything digital anything with Cora plus on it or just go into the app store and download the sambit coromant apps there's plenty of them there they don't cost you anything so i think it's a great way to get started yeah yeah thanks for your time thanks for your time james i i, I agree with everything you've said today i think even if you think you're not quite right for industry 4.0 please do go to the sambit.coromant.com website or the mtdcnc.com website and just educate yourself, you know, because in, in the not too distant future, you, you, you're kind of going to have to embrace this form of technology to remain competitive. So for everyone at home, please do go and take a look. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, it'd be great. It'd mean the world to us if you left us a rating, preferably five stars and uh, a comment saying how good we are. And yeah, thanks for listening and we'll, we'll catch up soon, James. And thanks, at, thanks for everyone at home. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.